think that was the first time I've used my wax stamp seal and I did that on Lily's birthday card. This is the birthday week. I had my birthday on the 10th and Lydia's is tomorrow on the 14th. We also had Lydia's dad's birthday. We've got my dad's birthday this month and my stepdad's birthday this month. So it is the month of birthdays and in true style, last minute, Lids and I have decided to throw a party over the bank holiday weekend with all of our friends. And on top of that, as you all know, because I've been posting some YouTube videos, I've had a very busy schedule, I've been traveling around, getting to experience some incredible things, but it's put me a little bit behind and I've got a lot to catch up on. So today is gonna be quite a busy video, but I thought just before we get stuck into doing jobs and chores and just trying to catch up in general, I'd quickly just touch base on what's been going on. So I didn't vlog my birthday because I just wanted to sort of chill. I got out on the golf course and played some golf with my friends. Lydia and I went out with some friends in London and had dinner at the Ned, uh, which was very, very nice. And then in the evening on my birthday, I actually jumped into bed a little bit earlier than normal and settled down to Sky Cinema's blockbuster this month, which is called June, which as you guys know, I'm part of the Sky Cinema Club. And so I have the privilege of being able to enjoy some of the Sky Original and Sky Blockbusters that come to Sky Cinema each month. And this month, I have to talk to you about June. It is the most aesthetically pleasing film I've seen in a long time. It's shot so beautiful, like just the aesthetic in general of June is just so on point. Now for any of you that haven't heard or seen June, then it's based on a novel by Frank Herbert and it stars Timothy Chalamet or Timothée if you're French. If you haven't seen this guy, he is probably one of the most swooned over dudes at the moment. I see him everywhere on my social media and he stars in this film as the son of a noble family who's been entrusted with the protection of the galaxy's most valuable asset. And it's filmed, I think, in Dubai, and maybe that's just an assumption, but the sand dunes look uh, like they've been filmed out in Dubai and then they've used some incredible after effects. I'm somebody that's very funny with after effects in films, particularly if I can locate where there is improvements to be made and um, some of the kind of fakeness to some of the effects. I have to say, I felt like they've really pulled together an incredible team and produced a very real and very aesthetically pleasing film. So I was just in awe with the cinematography throughout this film, but it's also got a really cool storyline, which of course I'm not going to run through with you here. But if you do wanna go and check out the trailer to A, see how this has been filmed, and B, uh, to get a little feel for the storyline. There are also three other films coming out in April, Boss Baby, Venom, and Still Water. So there is so much right now on Sky Cinema. I will also leave the trailers down in the description box for you to, just to head over to Sky's YouTube channel to watch the Sky Cinema uh, trailers of those films. So as mentioned, it's a very busy period. Today, I would love to get out and have my first inspections of the beehive, which will be good fun to do actually. I've been out there and fed them. I can tell you they are alive, which is fantastic news. And when I was feeding them, I had a quick look inside and the colony size is looking fantastic. So really promising, but I do need to go out there and do a little bit of maintenance. And I'm possibly gonna change a couple of frames uh, that they've not taken to just to see if I can kind of encourage um, them to do so. It could just be the colony size, but last year they didn't go onto those frames or those combs. I'm definitely gonna take those steps just to see if I can encourage them to draw comb to utilize the whole of the hive itself. I also want to go outside at the same time and remove some of the dead ivy that I took off of the trees so I just cut them off at the base and I now need to get rid of all of the uh, dead ivy that's on the trees just because it looks a little bit messy. I also have a little chore which is part of Lydia's birthday present. It's not a birthday present. It's just a request that I put a light up in her wardrobe. We need to get cracking with that at some point and that isn't a simple task because it's come without brackets so I need to try and fabricate a way of fixing it to the ceiling using a hook and I also need to shorten the length of it. So, as always, not an easy one. I have also had a parcel arrive from Pini Parma, who are a Italian fashion brand, and I actually ordered those on pre-order the same time I did the fashion haul. But because one of the items was pre-order, I think they waited to send over all of the other pieces 
with it, which I'm fine with. It makes sense to send it all out together. So we'll quickly unbox that before we get cracking. Um, but because it is Lydia's birthday tomorrow, I also just want to make sure I've got things sorted because I've organised a cake. And then we're starting a new tradition where we're going to be doing cranberry bacon and soft cheese bagels for each other um, on the birthday. So I'm going to do that over coffee and orange juice. So I'm just going to make sure that we've got the ingredients for that. If not, I need to go out and pick some bits up. Um, I just need to basically do some party admin. I need to liaise with the girls to ensure that we've got everything prepped because I think we're going to be having roughly around 50 to 60 people. So we just need to make sure that we're catering correctly for that number of guests. So it's a very last minute thing. I think Lydia's gonna be vlogging it over on her channel. So she'll obviously cover the day. So that means that I can put my feet up and enjoy it and uh, it will still be showcased and shared on the internet, I hope anyway. If not, I'll try and do something on my channel. But for now, we're gonna focus on getting through a few tasks and then I'm gonna move into Lydia's birthday tomorrow, um, where we're actually gonna be going out for a really lovely dinner at a Michelin star restaurant in London. So yeah, let's uh, get this pinny stuff unboxed. I thought we'd quickly come into the lounge to unbox the uh, the pinny stuff so we can be with the boys. It was like ages since you've been on my channel. Do you know what? This morning when we took them on a walk, it was a lovely morning, this little man decided to eat some sheep poo. So. The idea of you then licking me isn't the most appealing. My boy. Look at the size of him. <laughs> He's a big old boy. For a little puppy. Paul is just chilling on the sofa. So, anyway, Pinny Palmer. Not sure if I spoke to you about this brand before, possibly have. I have purchased from them before. Do some lovely stuff. Ah, lovely. First up, I have this orange pinstriped shirt. I felt like this would look quite nice with some cream trousers. And it's a colour of shirt that I just do not have. I'm starting to think it's a bad idea to come in here. These two. I thought it'd be quite nice to mix it up from the greens and blues that I typically go for in the white shirts and uh, chuck a little bit of orange in. So this season I am playing a little bit more with colour. I've gone for a 38-15 collar. So we'll see how that fits. I've then selected a pair of, I think these are cognac, yeah. Cognac cotton shorts, which are like a tailored short with um, a pleat to give me a little bit of leg room at the top. I'm not sure whether they're gonna be a little bit tight on the thigh, but we shall find out. They look like they tailor in quite a lot. I've gone for a 30 UK, so we'll give those a try, see how they fit. Lastly, a couple of ties. I really quite liked this. I thought it was quite a nice uh, tie. Also featuring some of my favorite colors, white, gray, and brown. <laughs> and then I've just gone for a very safe brown tie here, which is actually coming up a little bit gray on the camera, isn't it? But yeah, lovely. So that is my order from Pinny. I'm gonna now go and get my stuff ready to go and get in that beehive and have a quick look inside, do a little tidy up before the sun decides to close in on us. So quick change of plan. I've just checked the temperature outside and it's actually below 12 degrees. It looks a lot warmer out there because the sun's shining. We're gonna have to do the inspection on a different day. So we might get an opportunity tomorrow. We're coming into like 21 degrees by the way. So um, I thought it was gonna be a little bit warmer out there, but it's not. And the rule is if it's lower than 12 degrees Celsius, don't bother opening your beehive because the bees do not like the cold and you might compromise them. And at worst case, you might kill them. So I'm gonna take that risk. Um, we will have a look at them hopefully tomorrow uh, if I get a moment before Lydia and I head out. And instead, Lydia will be very happy. We are gonna go and grab the light from her greenhouse and we're gonna have a look to see if A, the light works, because it is an antique, and B, if we can get that hung up in her wardrobe. So a little change of plan and uh, we'll hopefully get out into the beehive in a second later in this video. All right, we take a quick walk to the greenhouse. This is the light in question, which you may have seen on Lydia's channel. It's a nice size. I don't know if it's gonna to be too low. I don't know if too low is such a thing over a center island. 
I think I found a hook that's going to work, which is good. My only concern is whether the actual fitting itself works, as in the internal wiring. So I'm just going to have to give it a go and keep my fingers crossed that I don't waste everyone's time. <laughs> first things first. Let's move some of this stuff. Second job is take a look at this fitting. Oh, I love you, Mr. Matcan. Now that is a very good sign. Could you use the base from that light? The black one? Mm. Yeah, it's a bit juxta though, isn't it? Well, I could paint it in with the wall or so, with the ceiling or something. So, yeah. You, uh... Oh, it looks so nice. I can make it go closer to the ceiling by hooking the hook around the higher bit, but it will still have a gap. The big gap? There'll still be a gap, yeah. How big? <laughs> so inside that is a ring, mm -hmm. and that's what that hook's on that I'm playing around with. Mm -hmm. Of those away. Just don't know if you get it down afterwards. Either way, if you get a cable tie, and as you pull the cable tie, tie it will pull it up so it goes to the ceiling, but then how are you going to get it off? <laughs> you have to tie it. Saw it off. So I can rip the ceiling down. So it makes sense to you what I said? Yeah. So does it work? Yeah. It does? Yeah. It's a bit precarious, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. I could, we could get, you could get that. Yeah, I'd like it as high as possible. On one chain. That's, what, that's how high you could potentially yeah, have it. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh, it's heavy. Yeah, you put I your hand back in the middle. Is there anything you can put under that? Just, you pass some pliers. Yeah. You know. These ones? These, yeah, those ones. Both, and they're both. And then hold the top of the light so it doesn't just fall off. So you're not holding the weight, you're just holding it on my knee. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're just holding it. Well, that's off, which is what was in the way. And then, let me just quickly look at that goes. <laughs> you see what I'm trying to do? Yeah. Oh, that would kill me if you saw me doing this. <laughs> you just 
filmed it for the internet. Sweet. I don't know if they'll um, last because they were outside. This yeah. can all go in the bin, can't it? Yeah. I'll have to tidy up anyway because I'm going to have to clear out because Ken's yeah, There's glass on there. Is there? Yeah, that's why I wanted to kind of get it done as well because Ken's coming tomorrow. Yeah. It looks so good. Thank you so much. It's not like a, a light that I really use, it's like a decorative light. So. Yeah, I mean, it does go. Yeah. Oh, it looks so nice. So, so nice. Over the moon. And it's up to the ceiling enough. It's yeah. not perfect. Did they come with all the moss or did you put no, that in? No, I did that. Fantastic. So, tomorrow, Ken. Not tomorrow. Yeah, it's Friday, isn't it? No, it's Thursday. It's oh, it's Thursday, Thursday tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's your birthday tomorrow, it's isn't it? It's my birthday tomorrow. <laughs> so, birthday present number one <laughs> is up. Lydia has her new wardrobe light. New old. My new antique old. French chandelier. Very antique as well, let me <laughs> tell you. I wonder how old the cobwebs on it are. I know, yeah. It's pretty gross to touch, I'm not going to lie. I love it. Good. Right. Speaking of Ken, actually, if we come into my wardrobe, he was actually here also over my birthday weekend with Graham and they redecorated the ceiling in my wardrobe. Some of you may not even notice, but previously the ceiling used to be like two-toned. So we had actually cut the ceiling on this curve here and that was white and then this was a wevit. Now it's all blackened. So the whole ceiling is kind of like a bluey white. We're using up some old Farron ball paint. We thought we would uh, coat my ceiling because it was looking a little bit marked by all of the candles. So it had like the smoke marks. So it looks nice and fresh in here now, which is great. They're a fantastic job which is good times, as well as painting the cornice in the living room, which looks so much better. And what we were just saying was that he is coming on Friday, Saturday, over the bank holiday weekend, to paint Lydia's wardrobe. And she's going for a different color. So it's gonna be a bit more of a drastic change. So get that done and dusted. They're gonna be spraying it. So they come in and they do like incredible prep work, Ken and Graham. Um, they'll be like taping up all of the internals of the wardrobe and all of the floor and anything that doesn't want to get painted basically and then they go in there with spray guns and they'll just spray it all. It gives a really nice finish, it's quite soft, it gives a nice balanced finish which is also really important. You can still get drips with spray, there is a technique for sure, but it's a lot better and quicker than doing it by brush because for example if they were doing a cubby hole they would have to paint a section of it, wait for it to dry, come back and paint the other section so they don't knock their elbows, arms, hands, etc., on the bits that have just been painted. If you're spraying it, all done in one go. So it means they'll be able to get more coats on in a quicker time frame, which is why they'll be able to probably bash that out uh, quite well in two days. The morning coffees have been lined up. We've got me, Steve, and Lids. A very excited porter. He loves Steve. Also, Poor little Stewie. Lumi brought Lydia a birthday gift by the looks of it. That's the first one in a, first one in a long time. Well, as always, the camera does not do it justice, but we've woke up this morning to an absolutely incredible sunrise. Looks amazing out there. Listen to the bird song. The birthday girl? Birthday ice cream sundae. They're the silver version of my black ones. Yeah. yeah, I got them. that far. I got them from Amazon. <laughs> Steve's recognising the colour change. <laughs> Honestly, you two together Very nice. do one. Um, but I, think, I mean, they're lovely. Yeah, no, I know. I didn't say they were, that's why I got them. Lydia's birthday cake is from Cutter and Squidge, and it's a wheat free summer berry cake. I had a little look yesterday. It looks really good. So there we go, how nice does that look? Get some candles in that, and then sing a, my best efforts, a happy birthday. <laughs> Can I in there? 
Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh, wow. Where did you get that from? That's lovely. It's such a nice cake. Wow. Did Barkley not even get out of bed? Yeah. Barkley, you don't even get out of bed for mummy. That's so rude. So rude. <laughs> oh, thank you, babe. That's so nice. Where's the cake from? Cutter and Squish. Ooh, nice. I've heard of them. What am I wishing for? Well, you can't tell anyone you wish. One million sausage dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Forty, should we blur that out together? Are you practicing? No. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. Thanks. Say happy birthday. Yes. You were so rude. Very rude. Very rude. Mm. Come. Mummy's asleep downstairs. Mm. Joined us for the gym session, though. Hmm? Joined us for the gym session. She did, though. yes. And she was very good to me last night. She only woke me up to let me know that she bought me my birthday gift, which was. A dead mouse. Yes, <laughs> I showed. Ready to go for a walk? Ready to go. Boys Lovely ready. walkie. Their new little coats. In your new coats. Little matching coats. So smart. Nuts and hounds, if anyone wants to know. What? Oh, not at all. Okay. Lady is very happy about her birthday son. I'm having the best morning ever. God, look at that. That's a fresh one, isn't it? Thanks. Happy with yourself? <laughs> Yeah. You bought me that Christmas. I know I did. Should have done the MG one though that we've got. Well no, because it's from me, so it's from A. Isn't it? Well, we're married. Well yeah, but you know what I mean. It's MG's from us, A's from me. That's true actually, yeah, you're right. That's why I've got my own stamp. Hello Mrs. Popular. The deliveries have been coming in thick and fast. I was going down at afternoon tea, three time tea time. Well, the first bee inspection of the season and I'm not sure if you can see but there's quite a lot of activity out the front of the hive today which is always a good sign. It's definitely warm enough to um, have a look inside. So as I mentioned, I'm just going to be doing a general health inspection. I've also got a little bit of tidying to do because they started to draw comb out the top of the crown board. So uh, I'm just going to cut that back, tidy up for them and then um, yeah, just see how they are. Check the Varroa count in the uh, tray at the bottom. And then I'm gonna get showered because Lydia and I are gonna be heading out for dinner. So let's do this.
just going to take this tray away and give it a little bit of a clean up quickly and then we'll be back. Right, so I've just cut off a lot of the comb that was situated on top of the frames and I'm now going to start prising out each frame to take a look. They've obviously used a lot of propolis to stick together the frames and seal everything down and so this is going to be interesting but just so you can see that is what the colony is looking like at the moment. I don't know if you can see but if you look here, drone cells, there's a lot of bees in here. We are possibly, arguably fuller now than we were when I um, closed them up going into winter which is incredible they've obviously been working really really hard at growing their colony size and it's just these two frames here that they're not using one or two at the moment so um, it might just be that they haven't got onto them yet but we shall take a look and see what's going on it looks really good very promising and uh, this is what I just pulled off from the top because they were Starting to get a little bit ambitious on top of the uh, frame, so... So this is a frame of water wall honey. With a fairly large amount of bees on it. So this is a frame of both honey, it's got larvae and eggs, and there's a tiny little bit of pollen, but not a huge amount. That would be due to access to that at the moment, but that's really good to see that they're, uh, they're working hard. And there's obviously a laying queen present because there are fresh eggs. The eggs look like they're being laid really well in the center of each comb. So yeah, looking good. Haven't seen the queen yet, but we'll uh, keep keep our eyes out for her as we work our way through. So if you take a look at this, you can see slightly raised comb here. This is where the drone brood is on these slightly raised combs. And then the flat cells are where the worker bees are. So always a good sign when they're producing male and uh, female bees. Just scraping off that propolis. There is so much brood, it's unreal. Hey, I've just seen my first drone as well. If you take a look just there, you can see there's a, a drone, a male bee. Bingo, there's the queen, just there. You see where the uh, little white mark on her thorax? You'll see her just moving around. She's looking very good as well. She's looking a little bit larger than she was the last time I saw her. I don't know if you guys remember, I was talking about a potential supersession, supersedure that was taking place and she looked like she was thinning up a little bit. That could have been because they weren't feeding her or because she was looking to swarm. So either way, very happy to have seen her. She's looking well and 
as I just mentioned, lots and lots of brood. So I can actually see a bee doing a waggle dance at the moment, which is how they tell each other where food sources are. If you look here, you'll see there's a huge cluster of drone cells that the bees are over. Also another cool sign. It's looking good, very happy. Well that's wrapped up the first inspection of the year and can't believe what we're seeing. It's looking incredible in there so uh, I think we're going to be uh, getting that super on before we know it. But I'm going to head inside now as the, uh, the bees are all over this camera. Okay, I think we know who the popular one is around here. <laughs> And it continues. So right, just before I jump in the shower and get ready, we've got half an hour. So just to sort of summarize uh, what happened out there, there is some row account in the tray, which is to be expected. Um, I'm gonna get an idea of how much row you'd expect, but considering it's been out there for quite some time, um, the row account actually isn't maybe anything to worry about, but I'll uh, report in with my bee mentor just to see uh, and hear what he has to say regarding that. And in terms of the colony size, exceeded expectations. The hive is about 80% full. Um, as I mentioned, there's two frames that they haven't been working on, but when I pulled one out, I could actually see that they're drawn comb on one side of one of the frames. So again, I'm just gonna see what Bob thinks about that. But in my opinion, because the frames they are using are full of brood and they've got way too much honey store in the bottom i say way too much they've just got a lot of honey store and so if we can free up some of that space for brood we can lift put a super on top and um, then we'll start getting honey so fingers crossed he gives me the okay and uh, we'll get the super on on the next inspection we'll just let it flow as they say so really happy uh, the bees look healthy managed to see a number of drones managed to spot the queen and we've got the original queen from previously her laying pattern looks okay, which is good. That's the uh, bee, bee update and the first bee inspection of the season. I'm actually gonna, oh, look at the state of my hair. <laughs> um, I'm actually gonna fill out my bee book so I basically document everything so it doesn't get lost up here because it would. And um, then we're gonna get ready for dinner this evening in London, which is gonna be at the Frog. Right then, birthday girl, let's take a look at us. So this is this evening's attire. We've got a little a little bit of a green theme going on. Definitely. Green. Yours is blue. I know, but it's kind of like, what's that color green? That It's like a greeny blue, isn't it? No. Okay. Blue. Green, blue. <laughs> We've got a spring vibe going on, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. Um, so talk us through. Actually, don't worry about it. You look beautiful, my darling. Hey. I'm well, sure you've talked to them. <laughs> well, you can if you want, but <laughs> have you talked? I thought so, so I thought, they yeah. They want to find out where my dress is from, they can come over to my channel. And uh, I've gone for a Luca Faloni cotton shirt. I've got my Tom Sweeney trousers. Um, God, I can't remember where these shoes are from. I think that says Velasca. And that is the look complete, nice and simple tonight. But anyway, we're gonna jump in our car now and head for hopefully a delicious dinner at The Frog by Adam Handlin. If you wanna be comfy on the way home, I would. Yeah. Should we just go and get it for you? you? I'll go get it. It's just in the cupboard in the, um, in the bedroom. Okay. Lovely. Lauren one. I know the one. Okay. Two for the lady, two for the man. <laughs> Would you like our finest bottle of Partner in wine. Partner in wine. <laughs> wine definitely doesn't. No. Careful, little dribble. Oh, no. No, that's not clean. No wine for 
us. Getting the family birthday calls. Yeah. Uncle Carlo and Nonna. Telling you that you don't see him enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny that I literally hadn't seen him in 20 years and he's seen me like four or five times since he's been over here. And he's like, well, it's not enough. I'm like, well, you moved to France. <laughs> God, I love him. No, no, he's so funny. He's like, oh, if you want anyone to make pasta for the party, I'll make the pasta into the fruit to you. <laughs> It'd be amazing as well. Oh you know, gosh, you know that. The yeah. best. This is the frog where we're eating this evening. Thank you very much. It's the big, your big moment. Your big moment. <laughs> ah, creme de la creme. Those glasses are like on it. It's amazing, doesn't it? Well, as you know, it's Lydia's birthday. That's why we're out this evening. And in true style, the frog here, Adam Handling's restaurant, they did not forget that it is this one's birthday. He's handling the food really well, isn't he? Who? Adam. Why? Handling. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> tough crowd, tough crowd. <laughs> Next up, we've got some sourdough bread and got a selection of, what do you call these, that compliment? Condiments? No, this is the entire dish. This I know, but what do you call this? This is like, it's like a, a kid's, a kid's take on um, the more, like the day after having a roast dinner. So right, we've got a parfait, we've got some chicken stock, just, and this is something else that I can't remember. But essentially, we're gonna be dipping our bread into that bad boy. Well, doesn't that just look delightful? I mean, I love the bowls. Yeah. Wow. That looks incredible. So what are we on, Lids? This is... So the towels really are there for a purpose. <laughs> so we have a sturgeon, caviar and waffle with maple syrup. Yes. Go on. Sorry to interrupt. I was going to eat this in your bowl. Yeah. This could be a breakfast that we can serve. There's no way I'm going to cook that. Caviar and cream. Caviar and cream, yeah. That's all it is. It's so easy. And then make the soup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You make it sound simple. It looks incredible there, doesn't it? So we're going to tuck into this. So for mains, I've gone for the cod. And Lydia's got the lobster and pak choy. Yeah. Uh, the chefs are hard at work in the background and that is looking phenomenal. Check out the knife as well. That looks really nice. It's incredible. Wagyu beef coming in hot. Thank you. And to finish off this evening's dinner, we have the cherry meadow sweet and millet dessert, which has a frog embossed in the top of it. I'm all about that. There's a froggy theme out the frog. You make your wish, that was a, you went in quick on the blow. Many sausage dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, happy birthday. Oh, I like it. Out of the tweezers. Everything's out of the tweezers. Those bowls again. Oh, by the way, I'm obsessed with these bowls. I'm obsessed with the bowls. I know, you have literally gone on about the bowls the whole time. I think they look very nice. Almost edible. Can we tell you that one? Well, that's us finished up at the frog and we are just about to jump into our car and make our way back home my lady Thanks so much. with the extra leg room 
Well, good morning. Last night was absolutely wonderful. We had a very delicious meal at Frog in Covent Garden. It's actually just opposite the Savoy. Um, the food was fantastic. I'd say that if I was to describe it as a restaurant, I'd say that it's for the foodie that doesn't like the pretentiousness of some slightly more luxurious or Michelin star restaurant. So there was lots of finger eating and um, it was just very relaxed and casual. A great evening, Lily had a lovely birthday and we're now, sorry, we've got window cleaners here and Porter is letting them know who's boss. <laughs> but I'll keep this one short. Um, it's back for the weekend. This vlog's long enough. I'm just about to do something very exciting in uh, the garden with the bees and I've got a few jobs to do. I've also got Ken and Graham upstairs. So I'm gonna wrap this video up. I hope you have enjoyed it. As always, I'll leave the relevant links in the description box down below and I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday, 5 p.m. Take care, have a good one, peace.